Hi, so uh, my name is Benjamin, as I said, and I'm the project leader of the Geeksbox distribution for quite uh, seven years now. Um, and we have designed a new media center application that uh, I'm going to, to present to you guys now. So, um, again, Geeksbox is a major live CD multi multimedia distribution since uh, 2003. Uh, back at the time, there were only Movix distributions for the one who might remember of it, who was uh, also a live CD distribution. And the, the idea of the distribution at, the at this time was to, to be able to turn the computer into uh, full feature set of boxes. Um, at the time, many, many computers were uh, at difficulties playing back several kind of videos of um, uh, audio codecs or video codecs, whatever, and we wanted to make some distribution that only does this purpose. So the idea was that with a live CD, one can just boot his PC and be able to run every kind of multimedia content he has, photos, videos, audio files, whatever. And we wanted it to, to be able to stream from various media, uh, media locations, so we are able to, um, to read files from either your hard disk, from the NFS, or for Samba, for the um, network storage. Also, we wanted to, to add support for the UPnP or DLNA um, streaming protocol. So, Again, also with the CD, CDDA support and DVD, DVD support, uh, analog TV support, uh, DVBE playback, um, this kind of thing. So at the time, it was a, a really small and tiny distribution, which was at the very first release only 3 megabit big, or small, <laughs> depends on the point of view. But uh, it's something that really can boot your PC really quick. And as a live CD, you can also shut it down really quick. Um, the idea was to replace the when it was designed to replace the first hardware set of boxes. So when when it was designed, it was the time of the first uh, Kiss uh, set of boxes, the, the first one that were able to play the DivX files on your TV. So that was the idea of the distribution. So obviously, we had to make it fully controllable through your remote control through LIRC. And uh, as you may see on the on the right, this is a screenshot of the of the interface, which honestly is quite ugly. And this is still the uh, the existing interface. And we have designed the new interface, which is called Ina, which is which aims at replacing this one. Uh, the Gigsbox project was designed uh, by the by a few employer developers, uh, including myself. And uh, as you may see, uh, the, the design is quite simple because it uses the Amplier OSD interface. So it's also quite, uh, quite limited. Um, again, as we are using uh, right now the Amplier OSD interface, it is quite difficult to add any new functionalities. So what we wanted is uh, to really split the media player interface from the user interface. Uh, also, with the Gigsbox being completely be, uh, based upon Mplayer project um, and being Mplayer developers, we introduced many features that were not at this time in the in the regular Mplayer project. So we introduced the support for the DVD nav, uh, enhanced a lot of things in the OSD menu, had uh, some TV control, LCD display supports, RTSP streaming, and things like this. Of course, nowadays all of these features are have been included in the upstream project. Uh, but as a consequence, many of the users requested us that the features that Gigsbox originally proposed they requested us for these features to be able to, to be used in other distributions than Gigsbox. So we had the, the willingness to, to create a new guy which had to be portable, which had to be configurable and extensible. So it has to work on any kind of display, whether it is frame buffer based or uh, XORG or, X, uh, or OpenGL based, anything like this. And again, yet to be an, a standalone application that can run on any distribution, not just Gigsbox. Um, so the application that we are talking about is called Ina. Um, 
it. Uh, you have uh, on the right a few screenshots of the application, uh, which, as you can see, is far different from the previous screenshot that you've seen from of the uh, current interface. Um, INA has been designed to be the GUI for the Gigsbox 2.0 release. Um, it's a media center application that is meant to be used as a home theater PC and is meant to run on low resources computers. So the binary itself is only 250 kilobytes big. Uh, of course, then you add the theme files, which are composed of all the JPEGs, PNG, and things like this. So it's quite enhanced a bit the the resource consumption, but uh, we have decided to make the GUI uh, realize on the Enlightenment Foundation Libraries project. So we will see this a bit later on, but as for the graphical interface, so we realize on the EFL, and as for the, all of the multimedia playback, playback capabilities and all the metadata retrieval, uh, we rely on two separated projects which are called LibPlayer and LibValala, which are a project that has been created by the Gigbox folks. So here, here you can see um, quite a simple interface or view of what NR really is. So INA is um, all in the uh, in the green uh, squares. You have all the libs that have been uh, designed by the Gigsbox teams. So INA itself, which relies on the lib uh, player AV framework and on the libvalala metadata, metadata engine, and for the graphical interface, it relies on the en Enlightenment Foundation libraries, or also known as the EFL, which mostly are the, uh, the projects called INA, EAT, EVAS, ECOR, e EDGE, and Elementary. As for the libplayer framework, it relies on different media player backends, so we can control mplayer, xin, vlc, gstreamer, and of course, this player control the audio and video render layers. Um, EVAS itself is uh, also used to control the video renderer for the, um, for the graphic display, but it also is used in order to control the input layer. Um, so one of the first library we designed is, uh, is called LibPlayer. This is a multimedia AV abstraction la uh, layer that was used to, um, I would say, to control various multimedia players. So the willingness is that some, pre some people, some of the users we have, uh, have made some complaints that we are stick to mplayer, and for some reason it was good in the past, it was maybe not as good as it used to be nowadays, because VLC might be better for playing the net streams, Xen might be better for playing DVDs and things like this. So we have designed uh, an AV abstraction layer that actually provides a generic, generic API, and this API allows us to control all of these players, so Amplier, Xen, VLC, and GStreamer. The two first ones are pretty much stable. Uh, the two last ones are pretty in a pretty much uh, experimental stage at the moment. So it basically can play, but with still a lot of bugs. Um, the, the application or the library has been designed to be fully multi-threaded and also thread safe. And uh, it allows the any it, it allows any uh, any front end to use it to control me, uh, any media players through various uh, audio and video renderers, so Elsa, OSS projects for the audio ones, and either the frame buffer, OpenGL, SDL, VDPIU, X11, or, or Xvideo for, uh, for the video layers. Um, this is some uh, internal drawings of the, um, of the lib player architecture. Um, the, just to say, the slides will be available on our website, so as they are a bit complicated, if you want to spend any more time to check about the architectures, they will be available on the website. Um, as for LibPlayer, uh, as I've said, we have one public player API. This player API is used to expose the control to various media players. So what, we, what you have designed is this, uh, this API, and the front ends, which at the moment is INA only, but many other applications might be able to use it, uh, just have to send some controls to a control queue. The controls can be uh, very simple. They are the, 
the play ba playback, stop, pause, seeking, backward, forward, uh, any kind of, uh, of things. Um, and through this, uh, we have a lot of... Uh, uh, nope. We have a lot of uh, internal structures that actually calls different wrappers. So when you register your uh, player public API, you have to register a new player structure, which you first define to be one of the four players that we support. Uh, and then the, the wrapper engine actually translates all the public API calls into one of the, um, into one of the uh, multimedia player uh, API. So except from mPlayer, which by a comparison to the other libraries isn't really a library, isn't a library. And so uh, mPlayer only can be controlled through the slave mode, which is a FIFO-based uh, mechanism. <laughs> And we have implemented a, a, complete, uh, a complete wrapper that interacts with employers through this FIFA mechanism. Um, one of the ideas of LibPlayer is uh, to provide this uh, video abstraction layer so that we might be able to control several new players or new things that might come in the future without having to change anything on the front end, so on the, um, on the user interface. Uh, next one uh, that we use is uh, LibValhalla. LibValhalla is a tiny media scanner library. Um, it has been designed to, to feature high performances and multi-threaded implementation. Uh, what it does is storing, the, is storing various information on your media files into a SQLite database. So in order to do that, it supports, uh, it parses the audio video stream properties through the FFmpeg project. And uh, it, allows, it also allows to, to grab many information from online the websites uh, in order to fetch covers, lyrics, synopsis, list, list of actors for your movies and things like this. Um, on the bottom, you may see uh, the different grabbers that we currently support. So uh, as for the offline uh, mechanisms, we support EXIF, FFmpeg, and the NFO files. And for the online, we support different websites that provide such kind of information. Um, this, uh, we probably won't spend much time on this, but uh, this is some mechanisms, internal mechanisms of uh, LibValhalla and how it works. So we have a scanner that actually calls many grabbers that uh, can be, uh, again, either offline or online and retrieves the various informations from uh, different content providers and store them within a data database. Uh, if you're interested in the, in the architecture, you may uh, check the slides on the website. Uh, so, and as for Ina itself, uh, again, a few more screenshots on the right. Uh, you may see it as it has been designed with embedded considerations in mind. So it has a low front print, and it also was meant to be user convenient and plug and play. So the idea is that uh, anyone with, without any computer skills is able to use the interface. Uh, as for now, we have uh, many modules that has been designed, so basic features like the music player, the movie and TV show players, also a photo viewer, weather forecast activities, and some online ebook reader that uh, uses some content providers. So we have two at the moment. One is called the One Manga website, and another is the Go, Go Comics one. So these are two websites that where we can fetch. Uh, book ebooks or, or comics and things like this and you can display them on your set top box um, as for the feature we as for as uh, as it was the case with Gigsbox, we support playing back from the local disk from cdda dvd database shoutcast podcast we support the upnp and dlna uh, playback uh, also, the application supports uh, all the dynamic media detection through the UDEV library. So it's a replacement for the HAL that is uh, currently dying. And so we, we may discover how, um, how many uh, hard drive you have. If you plug a new USB key, it automatically appears on your applications and things like this. Uh, again, it has been designed to be controllable through the keyboard, the mouse, or the touch screen. Uh, and as for the mid and long-term features, we expect to port it to Windows and to OS X. Currently, it runs only on Linux and has been packaged to Ubuntu. 
and uh, as you may see, many other features that uh, might come, like uh, video on demand, vo voice over IP, and uh, things like this. Um, we have uh, the project is still young, and a few f and a few um, a few announcements are, are due to spring, and it will be part of the Gigsbox 2.0 release that is uh, supposed to be coming by uh, the beginning of the month. Okay, so thank you for your, your attention. If you have any other questions, you can.